G'day everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be servicing my 30 horsepower Honda Outboard. As you'll see it's not that hard and it saves you a bucket load of cash doing it yourself. So today I'm going to be doing engine oil, gear oil, oil filter, uh, impeller, um, that's a new split pin, new thermostat, thermostat gasket, uh, the plate that the impeller sits on, new spark plugs, and fuel filter. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the prop off, inspect the shaft, and then drain the gear oil before removing the leg. First thing I'm going to do, remove the cotter pin or the split pin. The split pin. To get the um, the prop off, you undo the cotter nut. So you need to wedge a bit of wood in the between the prop and the leg, and this enables you to get some purchase on it to turn it off. And as you can see, you don't do these up very tight. Cotter nut. It's a washer. And off she comes, and that's the thrust washer there, and that's it. So now I'll inspect the shaft here, inspect the prop, so it looks like it's getting a bit worn. Right, the next thing I'm going to do is drain the gear oil. Now there's two screws to do that, one down the bottom here, that's the drain, and then there's this one up here. Now, you can fill from the top, but there is a specific little fitting you can get and there it's, it's supposed to be filled from the bottom up. So I'll drain it and uh, put some gear oil in there. Sometimes these get really, really tight and just a normal screwdriver won't undo them. So in that case, you'll need an impact driver. Oh, yep, they're tight. So, let's see this one can get Oh, I'm going to need the impact driver. So this is an impact driver. What you do is you put your bit in the end and then you set it to either undo or tighten and you give it a whack and then that turns and undoes the screw. So let's give that a go. There we go, there's one. And there is the gear oil. Now you undo this one at the top so it lets the air flow through so it drains out faster. There you go. So while I'm waiting for the gear oil to drain, I might as well start up here with the thermostat and the fuel filter. So this is the thermostat housing here. I only did that last year, but I pretty much do it every year. So I've just got to take one, two off. That comes out. I'll give that a go. All right, two bolts, that's off. Then you take the covering plate off and that's the thermostat sitting in there. You always want to make sure it goes back in the same way it came out. There we go. That's the thermostat. Not too bad, a little bit of corrosion. You can see the cooling gallery in there. A little bit of muck in there, I'll just clean that out. I'll um, strip the gasket off and put the new one on. So I've cleaned all that surface up, got the new gasket, and that surface is good, that will go on there like that. I always put a little bit of fresh grease on any threads, that, so yeah, just a little bit of marine grease on there. You don't put it on the ends, because that can actually stop it going in all the way. So a little bit on the threads, it's the new thermostat. Brand new spanker there. That will just go in like the last one. 
And I'll actually just put that on the, the cap there like that. All right, so that's the thermostat done. While I'm in this spot, I might as well do the spark plugs. So three new plugs. Pull the caps off. Plugs don't look too bad. I only did 40 hours this year. Brand new plug. I might just put a tiny little bit of motor oil on the thread. Just a micro amount. Put her in. Now you just screw it down until you feel the washer seat and then you take half a turn. So half a turn. Just like that. Done. Yeah, do that three times and the sparkies are done. That's the spark plugs done. Right, let's move on to the fuel filter. So this is the fuel filter. It's just a barb style. All we have to do is remove the metal clamps from each end and pull the hoses off. The old one. In with the new. And just push that back in, put the little clamps back on, like so. There you go. New one's in, doesn't get any easier than that. Let's push it back down to where it sits there. Done. Right, the gear oil's fully drained now. So we'll fill that back up. So to fill the gear oil back up, I'm using this, this little pump. It um, attaches to the top of the bottle. Like so. And then this little fitting fits into the, the screw hole. That just screws in there. You pump the bottle, and then when it starts coming out the top, that means it's full. So let's fill her up. There it goes. She's coming out the top. All right, so that's coming out. Oh, yeah. So just put that, put the top screw back in, which helps stop it from running back out when you pull the bottom out. Now we just need to undo this and get that back in without losing all our oil. Okay. It's got my finger over the hole. And there we go. And that is how you change your gear oil on your outboard motor. Right, so I've done the, the gear oil. Now I'm going to do the motor oil while I've still got it uh, sitting flat because I've got to tilt it up to pull the leg off to get the, the impeller in. So let's do the motor oil. So at the rear of the motor here, this is the engine oil drain bung. So we'll undo that and we'll drop the motor oil out. This is where the messy bit occurs. Right, I'll let that drain for a bit. So now I'll take the oil filter off. To do that, I like these claw type ones you put on a ratchet. And you can see I always write on the filter when I changed it. It so I wipe up all the oil, wipe around the 
seat or the rim or whatever you want to call it. Make sure she's all clean for when the new one goes on. Alright, so I've written the new date and new hours on the, the new filter. First off, take the plastic off. Get a bit of the engine oil. And you just want to put some oil around the, the gasket and on the threads. Just like that. And then it's ready to go back in. So for the oil filter, you screw it on until you feel the gasket and then you do three quarters of a turn. So three quarters will be... Oh, that's even if it'll go in up that much. I'm pretty much just getting half a turn. Mm, all right, well, I always only sort of just do hand tight, so. All right, now we just gotta put the bung in. I'll clean up all the oil and we'll fill her up. She takes 1.7 litres of oil. That's the bung. Again, I put a little bit of lubricant, a bit of grease on the thread. It just helps her when it comes out next time. Boom, done. It's time to put new engine oil in. It's supposed to take 1.7 litres when you change the oil filter. So I've just got this Honda oil here. We'll put that in. It's the oil fill. That's one litre and there's about 550 in this one. Alright, so I'll check the level and then we'll add the final bit. There's the dipstick. So pull that out, clean it, put it back in. I'll check the level. It's looking pretty good already. Full. Perfect. Right, so the next thing I'm going to do is remove the leg so we can change the impeller. Now to do that, you need to unhook the gear selection uh, rod. Now, it's important you figure out if it needs to be in drive, neutral or reverse because that will make it uh, so much easier if you've got it in the right position one for accessing the bolts but two sometimes getting the the shaft back up it uh, is impossible to align if you've got it in the right setting so I'm, normally I do mine in neutral but I'll just show you when I move the gear lever where the nuts sit so that's neutral reverse it comes down and forwards it goes up so you definitely can't do it in forwards Neutral, it doesn't really want to go into reverse at the moment, but from the last times I did it, I always did it in neutral. That's a bit easier to line up the shaft then too, because things are free. Okay. The gear selector's free. Now I can tilt it up and undo all the bolts holding the leg on. You just got to undo these leg bolts. So I'm just using a soft mallet just to separate the separate the leg. So it's just the four bolts, two on each side. There she goes. One leg off. So I've got the leg off and I've just got it uh, sort of mounted to the workbench. You can see there, that's the housing 
that holds the impeller. So what I'll do, I'll, I'll clean all this old grease off the shaft. And then I'll pull that out, replace the pellet. I'm also placing, replacing that plate that it sits on. Still looks in good nick. In there, I can't see really any corrosion, so that's good. Four bolts are out. Now the housing. Just... When you remove that, that housing, you just have to be careful, there's this little key that comes out of the impeller which holds it onto the shaft so just be careful you don't lose that. So the impeller slides over the shaft so I just want to make sure let's get the old impeller out. That's the old one. It's still soft as so oh well. The new one. Alright just pop down to the Honda dealer grabbed a new gasket for this plate that I got, which I didn't pick up originally. Hold on, that goes on first. So, new gasket down. New plate. So, there's the, <clears throat> the housing. I've cleaned all that, that looks pretty good. The seal's all pretty good. And that's the new impeller. What I'm gonna do is, so I've got some marine grease. Now, put this around the bottom of the shaft and you want to put some grease or you put some on either side of the impeller. Now, the reason you do this is especially for its first startup when there's no water to make sure it's got a little bit of lubrication so you don't damage the impeller when you put it on. Now, I'm also, I'll just rub some around in the housing now most of the shaft doesn't, it doesn't need lubrication, but I just put a little bit of grease on it to protect it from the salt water. Right, so you can see the little keyway there. Just a smidgen of grease on the key, and that way that will stay in there. You've got to make sure the little notch is facing the bottom because that slides over the key. There we go. Power's in. All right, now we'll put the cover back on. So if you put a bit of pressure on the casing and you, I'm just turning the, the impeller like that and it naturally flex and it just goes down and seats. And that's it. I'll put these spaces back in. Just put a little bit of grease on the, the threads of the bolts. All right, so that's the impeller installed. Now we've just got to put the leg back on the motor. Now this is the tricky part. Line it all up to slot back in. All right, that's it. The leg is reattached. Now for the tricky bit to reattach the gear selection. So after a bit of mucking around in between reverse and neutral, I finally got the, the nuts back on. Now I just got to go through, adjust this until I get forward, neutral and reverse easily. So I've got all the gears working. Now I just got to put the prop back on. Uh, I'll double check. I've got everything done up and then we'll run the motor flush some water through it, make sure it's all working. And um, also, got to do, also got to grease all the grease nipples. I might do that now. I 
I've greased all the grease nipples. Now I'm just putting a little bit on all the moving parts. So where the gear levers are. Anywhere there's moving bits. I'm going to put the prop back on. So just putting some grease on the spline there. <sighs> First thrust, wash, thrust washer. I'll just grease this little bad boy up too. Next goes on the prop. I mean, the main reason for taking the prop is you want to make sure there's no fishing line or any damage to the shaft. Alright. Washer. Cotton up. And again, you don't have to do this up very tight. I'm just doing this until basically there's no play and it lines up. New split pin. I think you can do it either way. You can wrap it around or in front. I've never had any dramas doing it this way, so... All right, so I've double checked everything. Props back on, I've greased it, all the nipples, oil, whatever, everything I have to. Now it's the moment of truth. I'll run the motor and uh, make sure everything's working. Obviously working well. It's a strong jet of water. Water seems to be coming out of there real well. No fuel leaks. And no oil leaks. So it looks to be pretty good. That's it. Now for the victory dance. All right, so that's how I service my four stroke outboard. I hope you found it interesting and it might have helped some of you guys out. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments. As I said, I'm not a mechanic. That's just how I do it. I do that every year and it's never given me any dramas and she runs sweet, so. Thanks for watching, see you later.